The hotly anticipated new Netflix series, The Umbrella Academy, premieres February 15th and promises to deliver a unique team of superheroes unlike anything we've seen before. Like any good story of supers, our tale originates in the pages of comics. I'm here to bring you up to speed on the graphic novels that have inspired the series, taking you from casual to Umbrella Academy connoisseur. I'm Chris Carr, and here's your crash course in the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> to be clear, I am recapping you on the events of these comics, so that's spoiler territory to some of you. Don't want that? This one isn't for you. I'm also going to be mostly focusing on the events of Volume 1, since that's where we can presume we're kicking things off. Volume 1, Apocalypse Suite. Created by Gerard Way, yes, that one, and illustrated by Gabrielle Ba, the first six-issue limited series, The Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite, was released under the Dark Horse banner back in 2007 and won the coveted Eisner Award for Best Finite Series slash Limited Series. EOA first takes place in an alternate timeline in which JFK was never assassinated, and is primarily set in 1977, which, coincidentally, is the same year Way was born. 43 superpowered children are born to unconnected women who, up until that day, showed no signs of pregnancy. Sir Reginald Hargreaves, aka The Monocle, is an alien disguised as a world-renowned entrepreneur who decides to adopt seven of these children and shapes them into a superpowered team poised to protect the world from unspecified threats. They form the Umbrella Academy. This group of children consists of, number one, Luther, aka Space Boy, nicknamed for being the youngest person to go to space, who possesses enhanced strength and durability. Number two, Diego, the Kraken, the rebellious vigilante of the bunch who can hold his breath indefinitely and throw knives like a champ. Number three, the rumor, Allison, who has the power to bend reality by turning lies she tells into the truth. Number four, Klaus, the seance, who can communicate with the dead, possess people, and has some psychic abilities like telekinesis and telepathic communication. Number five, the boy, a time traveler who's older than he looks, Number six, Ben, the horror, who can summon monsters from alternate dimensions through his skin. And number seven, Vanya, who has no discernible powers at the start of the series, other than playing the violin moderately well. I should also note, why adopt seven children? There were 36 more. Get yourself an Xavier school, Hargreaves. Well, it's implied that these are the kids he could find. We're given reason to believe a lot of these kids were abandoned and just didn't survive. At the age of 10, the Umbrella Academy kids stop an attack on Paris, which ends with the Eiffel Tower being launched into space. Sometime after, number five disappears, number six dies, and the group does what all supergroups do, split up and work on their solo acts. 20 years later, number one, the former head honcho of the team, who has now had his head transplanted onto the body of a Martian gorilla, yup, gets a call that their former mentor and guardian Hargreaves is dead and returns to the Academy. There, he finds his bro number five, who at this point had been missing for 20 years, yet is still physically 10 years old. That's issue one. And we only see each other at weddings and funerals, number one is reunited with sis number three. Rumor tells her brother from another mother that she's recently divorced and has a daughter. They meet up with number four and the John Bender rebel number two. After Sir H's funeral, the pseudo-siblings all talk with number five, who lets them know that he traveled to the future when they were 10, and during his travels, discovered that the apocalypse happened and spent the next 60 years trying to return to his old timeline to warn everyone. He claims that the end of days began three days after Hargreaves' death. Meanwhile, the estranged powerless black sheep of the family, number seven, goes to the Icarus Theater and is offered to join the Orchestra of Verdament, a musical group that believes they can destroy the world by playing the apocalypse suite. However, Seven turns this offer down. Hard pass. Back to the core cast, the Umbrella Academy fights a group of robots known as the Terminatus. Number seven injects herself into the fray and is saved by number two, who we learn still harbors a grudge against her for leaving the Academy all those years ago. Fueled with new resentment, number seven decides to join the Doomsday String section. We then learn that worthless little Vanyan, number seven, isn't useless and is in fact the most powerful of her siblings who can channel her music into a destructive force. Number five and one Dr. Pogo go to a cafe where number five is ambushed by masked men toting laser guns. Number five murders all those dudes. Meanwhile, number seven gives herself a dope new nickname, the white violin, and vows to end the Umbrella Academy and the world. Dun dun dun! Back to five murdering dudes. An inspector Lupo comes on the scene and investigates the mysterious masked men that five killed. During this time, five finds Hargreaves' monocle, which allows you to see everything about a person. He uses it and promptly faints. In B-Plot Town, number one and number three decide they're in love with each other and make out. I know they aren't actual siblings, but woof y'all, they were raised together. This is some royal tenenbaum shit that did not make me feel good in my tummy. Also, the white violin attacks the Umbrella Academy, and Dr. Pogo is a casualty of the fray. Pogo couldn't stick. You have to write a joke like that when presented with the name Pogo! 
In the final issue of the first volume, Finale or Brothers and Sisters, I Am an Atomic Bomb, a name that's there to remind you that this is written by the dude from My Chemical F and Romance, 1, 3, 4, and 5 do some end of the world prepping and stop the apocalypse suite, while number 2 goes off and tries to assassinate Vanya. 2 doesn't succeed because, well, they're family, 3 gets cut, 1 takes her to a nearby hospital while 2, 4, and 5 keep on fighting the orchestra verdament. The fight comes to a crescendo when number 5 shoots the white violin in the head, but not fatally. You know, how a headshot is something you can walk away from. This is why you double tap. Number four uses his telekinesis to stop meteors from falling to Earth, and hey, the world doesn't end. In the epilogue, we learn that number seven is paralyzed, number three will not be able to talk again due to that slash throat, which means she can't use her powers of persuasion, and one, two, four, and five return to the Academy, only to find it destroyed. Crushed beneath the Eiffel Tower, returned from space. Volume two, Dallas. <laughs> On to the next volume, the Umbrella Academy, Dallas. We open with a flashback. The OG Umbrella Academy kiddos battle a sentient statue of Honest Abe as part of their deal between their adoptive papa, Hargraves, and JFK. You know, how you have your kids fight for their lives, for your friends, and their amusement? Back in the present timeline, Kraken has become more of a leader figure in the group since Space Boy isn't feeling very number one. He's depressed and morbidly obese. Number three no longer is able to use her reality-shifting wordy powers, holds a big justifiable grudge against the comatose number seven, and number five gets hunted by gas mask-wearing men. He gets into a brawl and a survivor, which I'll remind you is a big deal because remember, the boy loves murder, requests the intervention of Hazel and Cha-Cha. Number five is horrified by this. Why? Well, remember how number five went to time traveling for decades? During his escapades, he came across Hazel and Cha-Cha, two batshit time traveling serial killers who have an affinity for wearing animal masks at a diner. How crazy are these kids? Well, at the diner, they ask the cook what's in their pie. And the cook's like, you'd have to chop off my arms and legs to get that recipe. So they do. Number two runs into Inspector Lupa at the police station as he's rummaging through photos of the latest bloody scene caused by number five, and consequently is like, hey, Kraken, yo brother crazy, where's he been? Number two doesn't know, but number three does. She finds Hargreaves' monocle as well as number five. And while that's happening, number four is captured by Hazel and Cha-Cha, who wants to use him and his seance powers to locate Fiverr. Issue three starts with a seance inside a TV set left out by Fatty McFat Space Boy, who's passed out on the couch. The seance tries to communicate with number one about what's happened, and you know, his kidnapping and his impending murder. The TV breaks, Space Boy wakes up, and the seance is screwed. He tries reasoning with these psychopaths by offering money and hooker amputees, a very specific sub on Pornhub, but the shifty twins aren't into it and they shoot him. Meanwhile, number five fills the rumor in on his time in the future, because he left some story highlights out. Like how he was captured by a time travel agency known as the Temps Alternus, a group sworn to preserving the space-time continuum and recruits anomalies like the boy to set things straight. It's very Legends of Tomorrow. Five went through a buttload of training and surgeries, backlog explaining all his extra skills and abilities, and says he was considered the best little anomaly. In fact, he was specifically trained by the genius Shabukin Goldfish. Here's where things get pretty wibbly-wobbly timey-wimey. Remember how I said in this timeline JFK isn't dead? Well, those Time Lords decide he definitely needs to be assassinated, and number five was supposed to pull it off. Five isn't feeling this assassination, but Shibukin, also known as Carmichael, threatens number five, telling him he'll kill his bio mom if he doesn't finish the Kennedy assassination. During this time, Carmichael also states that five's birth mother had twins and implies that number three could be his biological sister. Space Boy finds his dead sibling, who's now off in heaven with a cowboy god, who implies that the 43 superpowered children born all those years ago were a collective reincarnation of the Messiah. So, no pressure, UA. Y'all Jesus. God tells Seance that he should go back to Earth and stop being a little bitch by being dead. No, literally, he says, stop being such a fairy and kill those two sons of bitches. So God is just every drunk relative of mine. Cool. The next issue kicks off with number one's dream of being married to his sister, The Rumor, and having little chimpanzee babies. Weird. His ideal world quickly turns to Ash, and his dead guardian appears to ask him if this is all going to actually turn out well. Yeah, dude, your father figure came back from the grave to your dream to tell you maybe don't boink your sister. Space Boy wakes up, still in Hazel and Cha-Cha's place, with the presumed dead seance. We learn that Hazel and Cha-Cha have a nuclear launch code and accidentally arm the explosive a bit prematurely. Without warning, Cha-Cha uses a laser gun to blow Hazel's brains out before turning the laser on himself. Seance, with the Lord's help, then comes back to life and we learn that he had possessed Cha-Cha to get vengeance and disarm those pesky launch codes. Meanwhile, over at the Perseus building, the Donald Trump Jr. of our universe, Mr. Perseus, is fighting with his board members over what to do with the fresh assets they've acquired. Jr. suggests that they invest the money on some experiments and is like, if you don't agree with my proposal, 
I will murder you. We still have that Carmichael time agency plot going. We take a trip to the corrections department, the office at the end of time, where Carmichael is suggesting various ways to kill JFK since number five failed to comply. One, two, and four meet up at the Umbrella Academy, where Sans digs up Pogo's grave for reasons, and finds that Pogo wasn't buried under his memorial. Then a time agent, through Seance, says that number five is planning on traveling back to 1963 to Dallas to kill the president. Seance, Kraken, and Space Boy use a dead agent's time machine to go back in time. Meanwhile, back in Hazel and Chacha's hideaway, Inspector Lupo's chimpanzee partner, because why the hell not, here's a beeping sound. It's a nuclear detonator with one second remaining, ending chapter four and the world. Long story short, JFK is assassinated by the rumor, which upsets Space Boy, but she fills him in on the whole shooting bio mom, probably related to Five by Blood thing. The assassination keeps the world from ending since events are as they should be. Hazel and Chacha never get their hands on those nukes. But all this adventuring is emotionally draining. So once again, the UA makes like Mysteries Inc and splits up. We're now a few years post Hargreaves' death and the Umbrella Academy kids are strewn throughout the world. Five is a hired gun, Space Boy is still pretty tubby in Tokyo, and Vanya keeps at physical therapy because a shot to the head takes some freaking time to overcome. The fifth issue of this volume will be hitting shelves right before the show premieres, so this is an ongoing story. You can jump in and read these new developing plots and check out how the live action handles the previous volumes. There were also a series of short stories that Dark Horse would release for free comic book day, as well as on MySpace, which apparently is still a thing. Good for Tom! These shorts ran two to eight pages and ranged from things like more time travel, like in Mon Dieu, to a look at Vanya and Diego's band and her eventual push from Hargreaves to learn classical music and also isolate her from her family in Anywhere But Here. Now that you've got some of the highlights of the Umbrella Academy comics, do you think Netflix is going to hit all of Gerard's notes? Let me know what you're expecting from the series below. Want more videos? Well then click to the left of my face, or you can check us out on Roku and Plex. Thanks for watching and special thanks to all of our Patreon sponsors for helping. See you Space Cowboy.